So what's your name? My name is Danielle Sansom. How old are you? I am 23. Um, what are you doing nowadays? I am a pre-K teacher. In How's that going? It's going good, but I'm ready for a change. Okay, okay. So um, this whole concept is talking to a younger or older version of yourself. Um, which one are you choosing to talk to? I want to talk to a younger version of myself. What are you saying to the younger Danielle Stansel? Um, I want to say that to the younger Danielle, I want to tell her that to cherish friendships and to let go ones that don't need to go. So, um, you know, growing up in high school, I was very fortunate to have a mom and then I had two grandparents who basically raised me along with my mom. So I was very sheltered. So going into elementary school, I had groups of friends, but I had always been the girl who would hold friendships and not let them go. So at the end of elementary school, all my friends went to the same school and my mom moved me and we still became, we were still friends. We did everything together. Nothing could ever keep us apart when we went to different middle schools. And then shortly somehow in middle school, my friendship started to go. And it just started to disappear. And I realized that I didn't like that. Like I didn't like change. I didn't like letting people go. And so I became a people pleaser. And so, it carried on into high school until senior year. And basically I was jumping from group to group trying to find the right friends because I just did, I felt like I didn't fit in. Like I wasn't the girl that got noticed by any of the guys, but I wasn't like, I'm smart. Nope, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I'm really smart, but I wasn't the girl who like also stayed in the book. So like I cheered and I played soccer. So I fed in with most of the athletes but I really didn't have strong relationships with a lot of them. And so um, around senior year, I got into like a little situation with some of my friends and those girls turned on me. And I couldn't understand like what I did to make these girls who were once my friends um, affect me the way they did. And so during that particular time, I had friends stand up for me and those friends I'm no longer friends with today. And I really don't have an explanation. Like I just don't have an explanation why we didn't keep in touch or an explanation as to why we are no longer friends. But I know that I should have kept those people in my life because those were the people that had my back when nobody was around and the people that stood up for me. And those girls, actually taught me that no matter what you stand up for yourself and you let people know and you use your voice so if um adrian is watching Bierka or michaela thank you so much for teaching me those valuable lessons because without you girls things could have been a lot worse like i know things could have been a lot worse because that was around the time that i started following god again and so with the first lesson of letting friendships go, I felt like I didn't really learn. Like now, talking to a younger me, like you gotta let them go. Like even in college, I didn't wanna let friendships go. Like I was always fighting to hold together friendships and always wanting to hold together friendships. And that actually led to a very dark time in my life going into my senior year. I was holding on to a friendship that, not saying that shouldn't been there, but a friendship that needed to go away in order for me to find my way. And I was so used to being a people, people pleaser that I was always pleasing this person, pleasing, 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 pleasing this person, that all of me was being sucked away. And another lesson I want to tell my younger self in this part is, to know when to let go and focus on yourself. Because during this particular time, this person just made me feel like I was so less than that it didn't even matter 
exactly what I had going on. Like it didn't matter if I had I was up to here with classes and work and was trying to make videos and was trying to edit. It didn't matter to that person. It was how can you help me? I need you to do this. I need to go here. And it turned into a very unhealthy friendship. More like I was giving all of me to get nothing back in return. But because me and that person had been friends so long, I didn't really want to let go of that friendship. And it also led to me trying to fight this particular person. So it led to violence. It led to a lot of emotional and mentally abuse between me and her. Like we would get into an argument and then things would be said towards both of us. But my words were, well, at least I don't believe that my words was as hurtful as her words. Her words were more like, you know, like, look at you, your character. How dare you speak to me like that? Um, before you come and tell me about myself, you need to tell me about yourself. That's why everything in your life is falling apart. And so at that point, um, that goes back to just knowing when to step away. I should have stepped away. Like, I know now that I should have stepped away before things got too rough because maybe the December... December going back senior year of college, when we went home, I didn't move out of my room. Um, it was very dark. Um, I didn't think that I was worthy of anything anybody was telling me. Um, anytime, I was always looking for approval. Like approval in friendships, approval in relationships. And like, I just kept holding that friendship right here. That friendship was never leaving. The friendship was never going anywhere. And so, to my younger self, let it go. I can't say it so many times, but let it go. Like, dissolve it. Walk away. You're going to be so much stronger without it. During that particular time, I actually met some more great friends that I honestly believe God puts everybody in your life for a reason, a season, or for a lifetime. And I met some really great friends who turned out to be my lifelong friends who were there for me when this relationship was going on. And um, one of my friends, during that time, I came home after our arguments and, we were, and I was crying because of everything this person had said to me. And he looked at me, he said, do you believe those words? And I was like, well, kind of, because that's all she's been saying. Like, you know, that's just been everything that it's been balling up to. And he told me, he was like, but you're not that. And he was like, and I'm going to make sure you see it every day. And so it was very hard coming back in January. I didn't really want to come back. I went to the doctor because my mom saw that I wasn't moving. Um, I went to the doctor and she basically, you know, if you have anxiety and depression, they work against each other. So she gave me the anxiety test and, well, she, you know, anxiety, they ask you questions. And she, uh, she asked me questions and I told her the answers and she came back and she said, um, Dale, you have anxiety. And I was like, okay. Like, I was like, okay, maybe that's what's wrong with me. Like, maybe I really, like, that's it. And she was like, but I want to do one more test because, you know, you haven't moved out of your room or you're in a dark state for almost maybe 20 days. And she was like, and those are side effects of depression. And she was like, are you, you know, they ask you because like, are you in a sad mood? But here's the key. Although a lot of people like are, are diagnosed with depression, it's so many different forms of depression. Like, you just don't, like, it's just so many different forms. So she told me that, um, you know, not only did I have anxiety, I was also depressed. And that she wanted to put me on depression medicine, and I refused. So um, when she, when I refused after that, she basically told me, like, you know, you can take the anxiety medicine, but you're going to have to work a lot harder for the depression. So coming back to school in January for the first month I was dependent on alcohol to get me through and me and this person had class together every day so when I say let it go let it go before it gets worse 
to the younger Danielle. Let it go before it gets worse. Like, I've never been dependent on anything. But the whole month of January, I was literally dependent on alcohol to get me through so that I wouldn't have to fake what I was going through at all. Like, I didn't want... It, it like, you know, alcohol, it allows you to be something that you not, don't want to be sometimes. So it allowed me to be that happy-go-lucky, like, oh, yeah, let's party, let's do this. But when it would wear down and I was by myself, it would make me think of everything that that relationship once was. And so finally, um, one of my best friends, she was like, no, I can't do this anymore. Like, you can't sit in this house. You can't not eat. So I went to another doctor. And this time it was about eating because I had refused to stop eating. And I told her, like, I already had anxiety, I already had depression, and I'm not eating. And so she was like, well, do you have the urge to eat? And I was like, no. And so basically the doctor told me that with all, everything that was going on, that my body had basically kind of shut down. Like, it wasn't giving me the urge to eat because it couldn't even get the urge to get up and move. Um, when I went to the counselor, the counselor started asking me questions, and I realized that I didn't need a counselor. Three sessions, three guys, and then I realized I didn't need a counselor. Um, I actually realized that I needed something else, and so to my younger self, never stop believing in your faith, and never stop talking to God. Um, the day after I stopped, um, going to the counselor, I'll, I went to my school's chapel and I sat there and I sat and I sat. Then I went to our prayer room and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And then the next day I was able to get the urge to get up, at least be able to get up on my own. And then the days after that, I was able to do start doing little stuff that I liked. And, you know, the curtains in my house were open in the front and in the back. I wanted to have people come over. I wanted people to be around me. I wanted to laugh on my own. And I stopped taking my anxiety medicine. And, you know, sometimes people are going to say, like, why did you stop your anxiety? To this day, I still have anxiety. I do not take medicine. I just learned to cope on my own and with God. The lessons that I'm trying to tell my younger self is to let things go, let people go. Don't hold on to friendships that are no longer usable. Take time out for yourself before it gets worse because if, the scary part is if I would've kept being dependent on alcohol, probably would've been sitting here. I would've been in a rehab because I probably would've became an alcoholic because whole month of January, that's the reason why I don't know what happened, because I was intoxicated. Um, the next one is never stop believing in God and always trust that God has a plan, because there's some times where we're in storms and we don't understand and we want to give up. That's where I was. I wanted to give up. Quite frankly, I wanted to give up. I was like... Get me out of the school. I don't care about graduating. I will transfer back home. I will finish my education back home. But, you know, you have to surround your pe yourself with people that think just like you. When you surround yourself with people who are like-minded and have the same goal, and you guys may not have the same personality, and that's okay because everybody don't need the same personality. But sometimes you need people around you that are going to call you out when you need to be called out. When you need that tough love, but also you have to have people around you that's going to give you love when you need love. And like right now, I'm still young. So it's funny because I'm talking to my younger self, but I just know that if I could tell my younger self, or let me rephrase that, if I could tell my college self that you did good. You did more than good because at the end of the day, there's people that come out of worse situations. And I know that. And I'm so thankful that God helped me with this, you know, situation. And not to be hard on yourself. And that every day is going to be, you know, a testament. Every day is going to be a new day. And I'm here now telling you I still deal with anxiety. Every day, it is a struggle. If... 
you know, something happens at work with one of my kids or my boss says something to me it, and I feel like it's pressure, my anxiety is through the roof. And you know, you hear people say like, oh, you're giving me anxiety. No, you're literally giving me anxiety. Some of my kids do things and it gives me anxiety and it it's definitely hard because you want to still be yourself, but you're dealing with something that causes you to sometimes breathe harder, to be paranoid, to not be for sure about stuff. So I really am, un I do a lot of uncertainty. Like, I don't know what is really going to happen. And sometimes I find myself back in that role of people pleasing. And then I have to remind, remind myself that if these people were really supposed to be here to help me, then they'll stay. If not, we need to let them go because they're not helping me. To my younger self, you did it. You made it. You made it through high school. You made it through college. And enjoy your college years. Don't try to please everybody. Take time out for yourself. And remember to always listen to God and know that he has a plan for you. Because at the end of the day, if all else fails, you'll always have yourself in God. But with my friends around me, showing me love and me showing love to them, and as I'm pointing to them, they're pointing back into me. And it showed me what an actual friendship is supposed to be and not you pouring into somebody and them not caring. And so recently, I have reached out to this person and we may not be friends, and we may not talk about everything that has happened between us, but I think that me and this person, we will always have love for each other. Um, this person is like someone who has taught me so many lessons and very at a very important times. So we have figured out that we may not talk all the time, but we will check up on each other. But for me, it's keeping it at a distance. So, you know, another lesson to myself my younger self is, it's okay to bring those people back. Just know that you learned your boundaries. And it's okay to bring those people back because at the end of the day, those people taught you valuable lessons. So, if Adrian, Kayla, or any of you guys are watching, thank you for shaping me into the person I am, for allowing me to speak my mind before I went to college and high school because you guys have shaped so many of my friendships and have helped me into the personality that I am now. And to my friend that, I'm not gonna say broke me, but to my friend that caused me to grow up and realize that everybody doesn't have the same definition, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to go through the struggle to come out on top.